Yeah. Uh, you guys didn't see that. Anyway, I was fixing my camera. Welcome to episode 22 of the weekly. And of course, with me is Mr. Juan Bagnell. How's it going, man? Going very well. Again, just up to the minute with amazing World Cup soccer action before we went live. Yes, yes. And of course, the final game for the uh, quarterfinals is 2 p.m. Eastern today. Russia versus Croatia. Will we see 11 men against Croatia playing defense? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> it's like yeah. I didn't know you could just have eleven goalies. That's that's really incredible. Is <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you could you could definitely have that. Uh, but yeah, it's yeah, it's welcome to be fun. But uh, thanks for joining as always. Uh, Fat Produce says greetings, Earthlings. What's up, man? How you doing? Um, yeah, uh, Sam and um, Warren. I don't know where they are. They will join us, I'm sure, at some point. But they'll eventually us. make it. They're always uh, fashionably late. late to yeah. watch mm -hmm. All fun. right, let, let's start it off. Uh, no uselessness uh, major that I know of. Uh, I have different. a minor uselessness in that. All right, fire away. Flipping or undies and twists over oh. me saying nice things about the BlackBerry Key Two. Oh, people are really like everybody yeah, likes the I'm BlackBerry getting... Key Two. I am getting so many because I called it the best phone of 2018 because it is. It's the best communications device of 2018. And I'm having so many people like it's too expensive. No, it's got terrible specs. No, you're biased. You're a shell. You're lying. And you're like, I can't I can't fix that for you. If, if what you care about is communicating, then this is the best option of the year. That's well, I, I would put it, I haven't reviewed the key two yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I do 30 days. I wouldn't call it the best phone because of just one caveat. If you can't use a physical keyboard, then it just won't work for you there. See, that, that's I would, also, even I would for play. not liking tic-tac keys typing, like I'm not claiming that I'm a faster typer on, on a key two, but that it does give off a terrible first impression. Mm. If you're not used to a hardware keyboard, it takes days to get up to speed <laughs> yeah I mean, that's, that's a big problem for blackberry it absolutely is i mean all joking aside the feel of going from software to hardware is a big ask it's kind of like the opposite of going from an older macbook keyboard to a newer macbook keyboard and you lose that feel oh you're talking about the the butterfly keyboards has been yeah. dying uh sorry yeah but anyway you were saying yeah, that, well, but i mean like it's 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 almost that kind of muscle memory transition but the one thing i'll still give the hardware keyboard is way faster way more consistent and way more accurately i can call my wife without having to look at the screen much better and much more consistently and much faster than any voice action that i've ever used so things like that even if you're not into typing on the keyboard still make it a better phone than the whole rest of the smartphone market all right cool hey warren what's up what's up warren hey how's it going what the hell is this rant all about no, I just I'm getting a lot, a lot of undies and twists over saying nice things about BlackBerry. People have decided that it's a loser phone. So if I, I, I say think, anything nice about it, then I'm obviously compromised. I think uh, I should be getting mine next week, actually, to, to finally review. I'm actually interested to see what they've done recently because the, their Android offerings, not perfect, but have been pretty interesting, compelling for the market that it goes after mm -hmm. um, specifically. But um, I guess they're calling you a shill at this point. Oh, yeah. Well, and I had two people calling me outright liar that like well, there's no I, way that this phone is, I, is as good as I, you're saying it is and that you have I, obviously been compromised. I vaguely remember that I think uh, Mr. Mole himself actually reviewed it pretty well positively too didn't he everybody yeah, likes everybody to look has. Has. And, 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 if I, and if I can even go back even further than that. Most BlackBerry phones, even going all the way back to the since their new offerings, even going back is before Android to the Passport, have been somewhat prominently positively reviewed in most cases. Yeah, I mean the the problem with BlackBerry has had is uh, the phones have had like certain features where, like I remember, like I was talking. Um, uh, if you guys want to check it out, uh, Danny Wing had a video on the BlackBerry Key 2 event, and he was just asking YouTubers what they thought. And a lot of mm -hmm. people were referring back to the old ones. Like uh, Mr. Mobile talked about, the, like he talked about um, some software issues. Like, yo, if they fix that, I'm fine. Like, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, certain people were like, you know, Jaime was, you know, talked about um, 
uh, he wanted just to see the battery increase and certain things with the keyboard. He didn't like the first keyboard as much. So it, everyone kind of said like, yeah, you know, the first one was really good, but just fix, you know, this or this. And it looks like they've done a lot of that kind of stuff with this device. Well, like, you know, there's still definitely room for improvement. I have a 23 minute review. I mean, there are plenty of caveats and we absolutely have to acknowledge that it's a niche device but well, for the people that are looking for this kind of solution there i mean it, there's literally nothing else like it on the market so it automatically wins its bracket um yeah you know i think the the thing is that people don't understand maybe it's not a phone for them because they, they're not trying to compete against samsung and, and lg and all the apple and the rest of them they're going after specific business niche market for what they're sort of accomplishing and it's their hardware at least to really try to get people to buy their mdm solutions and stuff like that is really yeah. what they're really actually exactly. going after well, um, especially the difference between blackberry and blackberry mobile yeah <laughs> and um they um I, I i think it's just it, like i think we re we would review something like this in the tech community something positive especially if you're an active tech reader, because it's a very business centered device so if you're using it to Respond to emails, message, and text, which is the other like eighty other like fifty percent of our day. It, it it's gonna get reviewed positive mostly by by, by the majority of us in, in in that light because we work in business and it gets business done pretty well. I think other people that are not involved in that sort of thing don't quite understand. It's very simple. It's not for you. Move on. <laughs> well, but, but you yeah, know, man. like one of the things that gets frustrating is, is that being sort of a write off, you know, obviously the people that are the most agitated about me saying nice things about Blackberry are Android enthusiasts that have a very different outlook on what a pocket computer should do. And I'm trying to make this argument. If you care about your phone and communication needs above all else, if you're a lawyer, the 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 Blackberry key one that I saw out in the wild was uh, a, a guy, uh, a nurse. He he loved his BlackBerry, like this this is this is an amazing phone. Well, what is his job? He's a nurse. I mean, that kind of communication, that kind of uptime, that kind of runtime, not having to worry about battery life, things like that are going to be a huge get for someone in that profession. So well, I keep if, looking at those individuals and like they're not that, necessarily well served by an iPhone. There, if, there's something else that they should be looking at, especially if, for security. If that thing had if that thing had an amazing or. CAD camera optics like Samsung or LG in that matter, we'd all be rocking that thing at CES and events because it does everything that we need for stuff like that. We'd all have one so we can take our pictures and message and communicate because that's what we do for the majority of the majority of the time, which which is why I think it gets positively reviewed by us a lot more often. And I think people that are not in that, like I said, people that just aren't in that, which is the majority of people that watch our videos, <clears throat> just don't understand what that is. Well, they just, but I also, all right, I also, guys, we, um, should, we should move on. Oh, uh, but the, the, the last point is, is the other thing too, is <laughs> when, when someone's talking up like a galaxy, like that's supposed to be some sort of gold standard. I don't think people realize how often they give Samsung a get for those who are multiple device individuals that maybe they still have a camera or maybe they have a Nintendo switch, or maybe they have a dedicated music player. They have some other solution, which augments what the galaxy can also do, but Oh, but it's the galaxy. So it's the best. I mean, it's not uh, my favorite combo of last year was rocking a key one with my SIM card in it for all of my communication on show floors. And then I'd keep my V 30 around as the multimedia device. It's the better pocket computer. It's the more complete pocket computer, but it's not a very good phone. And I couldn't trust the battery life on the V30 to do all of my video, do all of my editing, do all of my rendering. And on top of that, also be my phone. So that kind of two device strategy is actually really common. It's just people, for some reason, don't want to give BlackBerry that consideration that they would also have another device in addition to their phone, regardless of what that phone was. Because they've been told that BlackBerry is dead. <laughs> right. Or, yeah, but, you've got really crappy editorials from people. Why won't BlackBerry just die? Well, I, you know, because they're still making stuff. And, you know, we say that we want more competition and more diversity in the market, but we really don't. Hey, what's up, Sam? Welcome. Oh, hey, Sam made it. 
he's, he's very stoic. And he just disappeared again. I didn't uh, disappear. I'm still here. I mean, your, your, your image, your image went away. Just, just went away. I speaking of, speaking of a company though that could be dying. Um, Samsung's Q2 earning guidance shows slow smartphone business. Ooh. Holy shit. Samsung's this, dead. Oh, it's dead oh, to everyone. Oh, Samsung. So I, I would just read the headlines for you. Samsung smashed records for operating profits seven quarters in a row. But the streak is done. According to the company's guidance, Korean giant just announced its earning guidance for Q2 2018. Consolidated sales expected to be approximately $52 billion. Dollars while consolidated operating profits are expected to be thirteen point two five. That seems like a lot of money to me. What's the year over year? What's the year over year? So we wait, wait, I don't know this guidance. We don't have the reports uh, yet. Five point seven billion increase from last year at the same time. Oh yeah, I know. Mm. I'm sorry, five point seven percent. Percent, but it's not big. Which, which, which is quarter. quite huge. <laughs> quite All right, huge. Uh, let's just call off the clickbait artists for writing this up, trying to talk, the trying to tank Samsung stock. Let's no, 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 no. Hey, this is what business. Not, not, not. Every business. Um, Samsung is confusing. It's basically changing its guidance simply because. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, no, it, I'm just talking uh, about who wrote the story. No, the, the people who wrote the story obviously <laughs> want people to read it, so they put this clickbait. Wait a minute. The byline is Tim Cook. Hold on. <laughs> no, I mean no. no this, 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 the headline is well written. It just says Samsung's future earning guidelines shows slow smartphone business. Yeah, but the but the but the opener is. Uh, a little bit. I'm telling you, everyone's, everyone's going. Everyone's going with the BlackBerry Key too. So that's yeah. that's why Samsung's totally yeah, losing. No, but, but, but let's be very very honest here. Like the, <laughs> the Asia market is very. Um, I, I, I would say is very congested right now. There are a lot of people who are vying not for Samsung's or Samsung level success, but they're grabbing everything else. And Samsung is still putting out a 5.7 percent increase over the last year so yeah it's not going to hit the target that everyone was expecting but this is freaking good for a company that is in heavy competition with companies like apple internationally it competes with apple internationally and smaller companies in its own region that are just trying to eat away at, at its profits here and there so it's 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 i don't understand how this could be a bad thing for samsung i think it's just hey they were telling your shareholders just don't expect us to hit the same earnings that um that we did last year. I mean that we expected this year. Oh, you know how it is. People just want to drive that stock price down a little bit, man. So they can <laughs> like I yeah, said, everyone's looking for that market it, correction, definitely. Yeah, it's just to drive that stock price down. Congratulations. You wrote All right. fun. All right. Speaking of uh, another company that could use a boost, uh, some leaked images came out of the 6.1 inch iPhone because I think anybody knows what kind of naming Apple is going to go with this stuff this year. Uh, it looks like the iPhone will come in four colors. There's going to be a, um, I don't know, like orangey gold. Something gold in the middle. Red and blue. Stellar blue. Ruby red, uh -huh. goldy gold, and goldy gold gold. <laughs> oh, they're matching clogs again. I mean, I mean, you know what? Hey, uh, but but to me, it's interesting. I, I can, I you know, we, we, there's always a red iPhone whenever they do the the red event thing yeah. that they always do, which is not a surprise. I don't, it's just surprising that it's a it might be a launch. And those two, the two far colors kind of make sense, but the blue, it's almost like I feel like that's an iPhone SE in my mind. It's, it's, it's yeah, a like, blue that, that, that basically contrasts with the hand of the individual holding it at any specific time. Apple has innovated the color right now. It, it literally has. So, so you're saying that this is not blue. This is this is special blue? No, no, it's special blue. It's not even been released yet. Have you seen any phone that's been released by Apple that has that color right now? Yeah, yeah I think they did. <laughs> they remember, they matched the clock. <laughs> I was just like, uh, should I answer this? <laughs> Maybe not. I don't even know. But I mean, the fact that people are going, oh, it's going to be a 6.5 inch or 6.1 inch phone, and it's going to have four colors. I'm like, why is four colors a big deal with Apple? They've done phones with colors before. So why yeah. is this even newsworthy? Well, it's whether or not they can do colors better than the, the 5C. That, that'll yeah. be the determining factor. But then also, it's like how everything old is new again. What new clogs are coming out? Because a Crocs, whatever them damn things are called. Because <laughs> clearly that's why this exists. There will be matching Crocs. I'm telling you. 
Okay, so but, but don't you guys feel like, like right whenever, across from the Apple Store? Wh- whenever there are big rumors or big noise about a phone coming out in different colors, like we've reached the peak of that smartphone. That that's you, that that's not innovation. That's barely fashion. You're still gonna have to put a case on it. So what does it matter if it's a pretty blue or a pretty orange color? It, it has to be unique color. Like, well, well, I you still have to put a case on it. Yeah, no, you still yeah. have to put a case on it. But my like, thing like is this. like. Like, like, like this right here. Yeah, yeah, like, you see, how else would your friends know that you've got the new improved iPhone if you don't have the new improved iPhone code? So when you go out hanging out with them, you take that, that is very true. Put no, put no, that, that is not even a joke. All I gotta see, all I gotta see, that is all I gotta see is a notch. <laughs> no, that, <laughs> no, that's, that's, notch. that's totally it. Yeah. The, but, but I'm just saying, By the, next year, the notch is gonna be obsolete, man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and not only is the notch going to be obsolete, but we're going to see Apple being the leader in that discussion over fixing the design and how this is now more seamless and no more distracting elements and no cutouts. Johnny Ive is going to be looking at that like he did for the iPhone 8 going, oh, just, you know, there, if I could go back and change that design, what we're doing now is just so much more progressive. He like, you, you, you know he's not even going to admit to it. He's just going to come out no. and say, in 2018, all these phones came out with design. It's never showing up on camera again. again. Whatever else. Like, but we want to fix that issue. No, you started the issue. <laughs> exactly. It's like you you broke it, and now you fixed it. Great. No, no, you didn't you, fix you, it. You like, like, some, no, no, no. You copied Oppo. Uh, sh- uh, who else had a phone with thin bezels this year already? Uh, Oppo, Vivo, and no, then but, but, you're claiming you fix and and Samsung eventually. Yeah. Samsung will be next, and then you came to fix it. Samsung will be no next. They're not taking that out. No, no, no. I said uh, bezel-less. bezel-less. Oh, bezel-less. Oh, bezel-less. Um, uh, well, according to Mr. Ku, there will be a 6.5 inch iPhone to match the price of current iPhone X at a thousand bucks, which could push the upgraded 5.8 to at least. Uh, by by hundred dollars, and then the six point one inch will have an LCD uh, come in those four colors we saw for seven hundred bucks. While the five point eight will be around nine hundred. I, I don't even understand all these prices. Anyway, look, that's new iPhones for you guys, because. So how many uh, iPhones are being circulated? Yeah, they're they they saying th- th- you're saying three. So basically, that's the it's an SE, a normal, and, uh, and an X. Yeah, uh, but I'm saying at the end of the day, how many iPhones will we have in circulation now? Like uh, only God I, knows. I, I think it'll be in a, end up being six again. Oh, okay. They'll have uh, to. They have to. They will have to end the six line, right? Because well, I, I think what they'll keep are the iPhone seven and the iPhone eight, right? Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, to, for that, for them to do that. I'm, I'm, so they're talking about an LCD six point one inch iPhone, and then an iPhone ten. Or they're talking about an iPhone ten and iPhone ten plus. Where, where, where are we going with these rumors? I, I think my my guess. And I, I, I could totally be wrong because Apple loves to mess with us on stuff like this. It's OLED for the big, the iPhone Plus, LCD for the normal iPhone, then LCD for the iPhone SE. That's that's my guess. I'm I'm, I'm also wondering, like, I, I think, yeah, okay, that makes sense because I think we're, I think that I guess the the ten or the new X or whatever, I guess, will be what the maybe would be the replacement for the what the Plus is. Yeah, pretty mm-hmm. much. Yeah, and just there won't be a Plus anymore. No, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It'll be, be a nice, uh, a, a small, medium, large uh, yeah. entry or mid ranger, all rounder, and premium. Pretty much. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know. The, I, I, I'm wondering if I wonder if they really will make that SC with 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 them always selling the older phone. And God, I hope so. <laughs> I just, I just, they'd have to cut that whole line off. For, to, yeah, but the, the SC, mar- the SC market is still there. That was a market yeah. they created, and they somehow just didn't update. And it's, they still have, yeah, a sizable chunk of iPhone users who won't even move to a seven. Just from a, just too big. Just from a cost perspective, and just for them, in the way, in brand fact, they'd have to cut off the other phones to put that out, or one of those seven three. Oh yeah, put that out. No, no, they'd, they'd have, have to cut off the six S, which is still their best seller right now, just yeah. to put that out. So, but I think it'd be more than that if they're if they're doing these two phones here. And then no, no, it, 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 would, it would just be the six S because the six S is the it's the highest selling iPhone. Right yeah, but, but but what I'm saying from cost perspective is that they remember they're they're going in OLED territory now, so they're spending more on the other higher end iPhone. Well, well, only one will have the OLED though, which is the high, highest one. And right now, yeah. the, from the next reports, uh, LG <laughs> says they're doing five million OLEDs at least for the That's iPhone cool. launch. But they, what, I'm, what I'm saying is they still have to they have to cut something somewhere to pay for what that's going to be. Success. 
And but I think it's going to be more than a success. I think oh, you more than that. You're going to take the seven out too. I think they take them both out. I do. I think. I, I think taking the success is enough. And and, and, and you and, and you put that and you just put the uh, that SC or whatever that replacement is going to be for that air, that line. Well, that line there. the SC is also going to go away. SC is going to want if that comes out. Yeah. SC and success. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think all that gets swept out, and we just have an SC and eight. Uh, whatever new iPhone and whatever new iPhone 10. I think no, no, I'm become, I think they have four devices available. No, I think it's still going to be six. I don't think it's going to be four. Their, 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 their strategy is kind of compact there, but I mean, we'll see come, come September. Um, Before we jump on, I just wanted to mention because we did mention Red and Aditya also said Project Red at least contributes to AIDS research. Just like a quick note that I think was news that came out this morning. Um, uh, HIV-1, which is like the most widespread version of HIV, actually is having a test right now for candidates that actually um, has been shown to have an immuno reaction. So basically, this is like the biggest news in AIDS research right now. So yes, as much as we're dogging like devices and we're talking about how these devices aren't really innovative or not or innovative, they do sometimes do a lot of good. <laughs> so it's, it's 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 good to mention stuff like that. Different kind of tech, but worth mentioning. Okay. Sorry, I, I wasn't Thank sure you, where no. you were going with that. I didn't really. But did you? You're just changing this. Is this a, no, no? I'm a, why, why were we talking about it? Why were we talking about it? We mentioned Project Red. And the red also iPhone. In, the, in, in the chat, um, Aditya also mentioned, you know, Project Red at least contributes to AIDS research. So gotcha, 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 gotcha. as much okay. as we can be sorry, sorry, cynical, sorry. I, 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 I get where you're going. We, we're normally can be very cynical. I'm just saying sometimes these things make huge impacts. <laughs> so damn it, Sam, you, you know, confused the chat and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> We're all up now. Good, good stuff. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, next topic. Uh, you know, foldable devices. You know, that's the way it is. LG's patented for a foldable phones in the <laughs> sorry in the works. It's got a unique double hinge. Um, so we'll see. I mean, it looks like you know it's that time of the year, man. Like you know, foldable phones are going to be here. We've got LG with that. We've got uh, rumors of the next topic is the Galaxy X having a curved three thousand milliamp battery. At least it's got three thousand. So. What do you guys think? You know, LG's patent, Galaxy X. You know, I think it's, it's 2019 is going to be the year of the of the curved phones, man. We'll just be seeing all foldable, curved, everything of 2019. Man. I mean, although the rumor is that the Galaxy X might come out, be announced at CES, I say they're still going to do something in October. Yeah, I think they are. Uh, there, there's, there has to be a reason why they've pushed up the announcement for the notes that um, that far um, up. So maybe they're coming out with it around Christmas. That, that's the only thing. Yeah, because it's about. a limited, it would be a limited run. It would be like how they did the Galaxy Note Edge, right? Yeah. Which is uh, a no, smaller. You, you, think of, you think of the round, the Galaxy round or whatever. No, but even the, uh, oh, yeah, the round. Yeah, the round was that, but the Edge also had a limited amount, sorry. But you're right. The round was the one that came um, uh, late in the year. Um, uh, any thoughts, Juan? I... G Flex 3. <laughs> <laughs> Notice this the worst G Flex 3. Oh, I'm laughing. I, I just found my, my crazy solar red uh, G Flex 2. Just looking at it, thinking, like, oh, all the things this could have been. But LG getting literally burned by the Qualcomm 810 in this phone. Um, I'm still not sold on foldable devices. I have serious concerns over durability and battery life, radically increasing screen size without actually compensating with bigger batteries. Uh, Android is still in a pretty infantile state for understanding what's going on with different displays or changing the displays or aspect ratios. I, I really hope that these companies have, have worked out some of those issues that we've seen with devices like the Axon M, going all the way back to the Kyocera Echo. It's a punchline for a reason in trying to push beyond what Android is actually capable of. And I'm still not convinced that Android is going to do this stuff any better. No, I, I so, would agree with you, though, there. I, all that I think this said, is a Windows territory, not an Android territory. I think I, I agree. All, and and for, for this specific reason, all of that being said, um, the, the, the notion of this does fall into a, you know, more aggressive or advanced usage. I have the same problems with foldable phones in a way that I had with modular phones, where you're coming up with a proprietary solution for something that can be solved with a USB cable. 
Um, when you look at decks, when you look at how well a Mate 10 can power a desktop grade experience with a $20, you know, HDMI dongle, like this is all you need. And then you plug it into a proper TV monitor projector, anything you want. And you've got a desktop grade computing experience where I can render 4k video. That's, that's a good solution already. So I'm, I'm, this is one of those things, like if modular phones had arrived five years before they did or foldable phones had arrived five years before they did, and we didn't have this other ecosystem of products that we could use to flesh out the phone experience, I'd probably be a bit more bullish on a foldable phone. But right now, I have very serious concerns about what this is actually solving, and I don't think it actually serves to improve the smartphone experience at a time when we're trying to get away from looking at our screen all the time. Who says they make devices to solve stuff, man? Well, this, but, this but, cures, but look, this look, at the philosophy, look at the philosophy from Google <laughs> and Apple where they're building in these new apps and services to help you monitor your usage and take you, you know, like there are times where you need to put your phone down or smart vo uh, voice assistant. Oh, no, like, I, I know. I, I was just joking. I'm saying it solves, this just solves an itch of no, no, this make those no, 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 no. Guys, it's simple. They need something to do. No, no. I, I, I think they need awesome. something to do. No, there's something. something. Somebody put a project manager wreck out there, and that and they made some fancy, fancy requirements. And somebody said, "You know what? You're not doing anything. Make a foldable phone." And here we are. Somebody has to justify their job. No, no, no. foldable I, I phone. Know I don't think at the end of the day is going to be the thing that really defines the foldable screen market. I think what's going to define why are we folding our screens? What, the, what's going to define why the, um, the foldable screen market is actually at the end of the day going to be wearables. Um, this is what we want for wearables. When you talk about wearable tech that has screens on, them, this is exactly the kind of technology, the kind of innovation we want. Something that you can place on your body, something that conforms to you know whatever part of your body you're going to be wearing. So a shirt, when you're going jogging instead of wearing a jersey and then slapping that huge iPhone on your arm, you have a shirt that actually has a screen that monitors your vitals while you're jogging. This is what we want. It's coming in a form factor that we really don't need, which is like a phone, uh, as phones, we don't need that right now, but eventually I think it's going to lead to better wearables. And yes, we like, I don't think this is gonna sell. I think it's definitely going to be very limited release, but if, if whoever comes out with this foldable phones, but I would say five, 10 years from now, we're all gonna be living in a world where we can actually, you know, throw on a shirt and basically say, oh, you know what? I, I need to change something on this shirt. I need to increase the cooling factor on the shirt, turn on the screen and then boop, 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 we're good. It, it should be pretty awesome. But I'm just saying that there are use cases for this. We're not there yet, but this is like the, the baby steps towards something like that. No, Lou Rod, we're not blaming Westworld. Westworld just reminded <laughs> us of the PDA itch. Yeah. I mean, again, I, to me, it's, it's not even the devices that is the concern. It's software because our traditional software for everything from PC down to phones have a very static. Our software is not pliable. They don't, they don't, you know, it, it's not that kind of thing where, you know, how Google talked about how Android can be everywhere and you have Android on TV and it sucks. It absolutely is treacherous. It doesn't even blend what a TV is supposed to be like. And our software is not adaptable. To me, once we have adaptable software, then it doesn't matter what form factor your device is, right? It, you can you can have it as a foldable, you can have it as a patch in your shirt. All those things will apply well, but you know they're taking the approach of you know hardware first, and then hopefully software would match at some point to get us to where we're going to. But it looks like uh, this race will continue as Samsung is partnering with ARM on a seven in, sorry, I said seven inch, seven nanometer processor, which is quoted to have more desk -like, uh, desktop-like capabilities. So this might be Samsung's res response to the rumored um, uh, Qualcomm's uh, Snapdragon 1000, which is you know the uh, next major, desktop line uh, processor, or it could be going into some of these foldable, you know, devices. What do you guys think? ARM going to that desktop space. Uh, well, I, again, from everything else that we've been saying, we're the, the, the winner is going to be trying to find ways to blur the line in following services to individuals. Uh, it, 
if that means having more of a Windows great experience on mobile processors, or if that means moving over into a personal area network with augmented reality and smart clothing, no, no one knows what that future is going to look like. And we're all throwing some experiments out there. But I think the market has been ready for the last couple of years to really shake up the desktop, laptop, tablet, smartphone, wearables ecosystem that we've had. We've been in a holding pattern for a while. Like phones really haven't done much over the last two years to shake up the way that we interact with our data and services. So we, we've been, we, there's a lot of pent up pressure. There's a lot of buildup leading to this. Um, I, I think we're all ready for, for something new. Warren? Uh, I kind of agree with what kind of uh, <clears throat> um, Juan has been saying. It's like, it would be nice to, you know, we we're getting all this new tech and these new ideas of making different devices the way be able to interact with different services. But it's, it's what uh, what is it going to be? It, it, and, is it, and, is it, and is it going to be something that's like, worth actually having because like you said smartphones have been stagnant for a long time they've been just this you know square slab then this all we did all the most we did is we changed to 18 by 9 that's like the biggest thing that's really changed is just changing its form factor to be a little bit skinnier um but nothing else has really come from that um whole whole, whole sort of space so it'd be nice to see what these other like these bendable displays these small and animated processors to see where this sort of stuff can go. But I also, you know, I don't think they're necessarily done on the form factor with smartphones either. There's other things that can be added to it. We're getting motorized popped up cameras and and things sort of moving parts on things that'd be that'd be pretty interesting to see how much this bezelless level goes that we get to the the world of where it has no bezel and it's just a screen you kind of pick up and you just kind of, and it's like translucent to something like that, like something out of sci-fi or something like that. Who knows if it'll get that point? It won't matter because you need a case with it anyways. So, <laughs> but um, but yeah, just just kind of reiterating what um, Juan has said. I said I'm excited for it, but it's it they they they've got to show. It, it, I don't know what the hit product or application is going to be for that just yet. Um, Sam. Any thoughts? To me, it just seems like an always on display, uh, or always on device, or always connected device um, push, right? Because the thing that really stands out here is it said basically it can be as much as a 40% drop in power consumption. That's huge. So it's, it's, it, it, if you can say, hey, it's, on, it's in your mobile device and it gives you, you know, an additional 40% of battery without you having to change the phone factor of your phone, that's already huge. You know, you increase your battery capacity with this kind of uh, chip in it, and you might be looking at battery um, devices that can actually last you all day. You talk well, about them. but Sam, when, how 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 often have we seen? I mean, well, even look at like the Google Pixel. You know, now now that we've got <laughs> yeah, now that we've got more power efficient chipsets. You know, going from a, a Qualcomm eight ten to a Qualcomm eight twenty when we had the first the 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 first Pixel come out meant we could drop from a 3,000 milliamp hour battery to a 2,700 milliamp hour battery. Exactly. We, we're, we're going to try to push more things, all because we want to put more things in the phone, but we'll take, we'll take away the headphone jacks, just because, you know, aesthetics-wise and bravery. But no, it's, 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 it's one of those things, right? Um, they are going to make a percent battery improvement. We can put in a forty percent smaller battery. <laughs> Charge you the same. But you see, but, but the push really is like I think last year the real push was for these always connected PCs and for these always connected PCs, you're going to need more power, right? You're yeah. going to need more power for these uh, for your five G chips in there. That's really going to take these things over the edge. So having devices like this and the roadmap of getting this down to a five nanometer and a three nanometer eventually, this is going to lend more to these always connected. Season better um, usage from your com from your computer in the pocket, really. So um, I'm hoping they don't make the same decision they've made over the last few years, and we do get to benefit the actual benefits not that, that that aren't just like, oh look, I can play a game on this stuff, or oh wow, look, the, the the smoothness of scrolling through this is just butter. But we can actually say, hey, I can actually use this device to do my computing for a full day, you know, and still be able to use it to do all my entertainment and actual communication that I need to do. It's, it's pretty, uh, I'm hopeful. All right. 
All right, all right, all right. All right. Um, yeah. Moving on to another Samsung stuff. I'm sorry, uh, we, before we jump on, <laughs> uh, tech file rec tech is like 20% less explosive force. <laughs> <laughs> Safer on an airplane. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> um, looks like there's a Samsung patent uh, for 3D face recognition. Uh, said the Galaxy S10 might benefit from this. Possibly, I. Samsung will probably throw it in there, and, but I think they will highlight the fingerprint sensor on the screen more than anything else. But you know in Samsung, they usually have multiple modes for security and all that fun stuff. Um, I'm sure no one is too crazy excited about this. And I'm just pissed uh, off at Samsung. It used to be the note, the, the, the note used to be the line where you throw these things into. All of a sudden, it's now the S line? It's not ready. The what? It's not as ready as they want. I mean, it's on other phones, but it's just not... For Samsung's kind of mass assumption, they don't want people to touch one specific area on the phone. It just makes sense for them. You gotta wait. I guess. Yeah. So just, just calm down, Sam. Just. I'm just saying, I don't. I don't want to have to wait till next year's note, man. Give it to me on the note this year, man. Yeah. Speaking of what could uh, change, maybe next year, Google's saying that uh, Duplex, their AI. Um, uh, assistants that can answer phone calls and sound like a human being may possibly replace call centers, kicking people out of jobs yet again, even mm -hmm. in developing countries. Sir, service God jobs damn it. Are in this coming AI, AI storm. <laughs> <laughs> How can I help you? I mean, it, it's it's funny though because I thought about this and I was like, yeah, this is crazy. Like, this is going to take away jobs from people. Um, in call service centers around the U.S., around the world, places like India where they're a lot. Then, yeah. then again, the other side of me was like, man, sex workers too on phone sex lines will also lose jobs. <laughs> <laughs> is that still a thing? I thought <laughs> like no, no, it just it it become like cam girls or something. I'm, it, I, I'm, this, this numbers are still there. I'm just saying people lose jobs. It's okay. you know the economy is going to hit everywhere. I, 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 I feel seriously. like. The text I don't know, know if you're probably still, like, a bigger job calls? loss than the 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 sex call industry. You're worried about everybody that that you know you're not letting anyone. I'll just be uh, happy to. I'll just be happy that I'll have a clear communication between somebody on customer service for the first time if ever. Ooh. Wow! I, I, no, I'm serious because like I so I'm I have a bunch of problems with that. Google Voice and hitting a call center because it's like there are four layers of like the call center. It, it, you know, it's not just a straight one to one phone call connection. No. These yeah. are all like digital lines. So by the time it goes to the Google server, then gets translated into an actual phone call to my phone. There's like a full second delay, and I can barely hear them, and they can barely hear me. So if Google Duplex just makes it one seamless like Wi-Fi call from my point all through data to a Google server running duplex, I will be able to hear them more clearly. It, it'd be funny if you're going like, um, you know, can I speak to your manager? I hold on one second. I am the manager. Right, yeah, I'm the manager. <laughs> and then you go like, wait, wait, where are you located? Moonbase Alpha. <laughs> you're like okay it's cheaper up there <laughs> exactly. yeah i mean like you know dark side of the moon you know it's very cool to keep the servers nice and 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 cool over there so hey well uh, it, it's just interesting though it's funny because um you know we've talked about this in the past and how like uh sam has talked about how they sh maybe should be a base wage eventually like how elon musk has mentioned that because yeah, kinda, again what is it a living wage the living wage yeah. yeah um you know uh because you're gonna have service jobs that you think you know we're like hey you're always gonna need a human being and then we google does that demo <laughs> at um io and you're like is that you know? It's, oh, I felt like it was almost like me watching um, something from E3. Is that really gameplay or not? I'm not sure. Yeah. Like that's how I felt. <laughs> is I felt it curated or is yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, I was like, I was like, mm, I don't. Uh, it, it felt like gameplay, but you know, I'm maybe gameplay cut in. Cut in ex exactly. <laughs> And now, then, now, to, to be fair, what, what we saw there was absolutely the two most successful calls out of probably hundreds or thousands that they had put out yeah. there. Yeah. But although although they also saw two people. really successful um, uh, experiments uh, using yeah. that, that voice protocol. 
Yeah, they did. They, they did have um, a few reporters and um, bloggers check it out. So I'm sure, of course, you know it was through their own, you know, very selected setup. But it it's definitely going to grow. Um, whether it's duplex, whether it's you know Watson doing its own thing down the line and stuff like that, we're going to have this, and it's going to be a very interesting world where. Um, you know, it reminded me of something uh, on um, uh, Amazon. Uh, this is like a sci-fi show they have, and there was one episode where the world uh, ended through, through war, but the the machine kept on just producing yeah. goods, and it couldn't stop, so it was depleting the planet. And finally, they hijacked one of the machines, and they got customer service. And the machine said they would it would send someone to them so that they can have customer service. And it just reminds me of that in the sense that you know, you're not going to have that human contact anymore at some point, but it's, you know, 15, 20 years down the line where you know that you're talking to somebody who is duplex. It's well, not, not, not even then in, in, in the amount of time is so, so when, when this becomes sort of a standard thing, we'll also be able to put our Google assistant in touch too. So it's not even in, in 10 years that I'm going to be talking to machines. It's that my machine will be talking to someone else's machine and then yeah. reporting back to me what, what's going on there. Yeah, I mean, I mean no, it, it's true, but, but the, the problem is is that touch of human. You know, like you call for, you know, like say you're, you're trying to book a service or maybe you're trying to say uh and get some points on your credit card where the human looks and goes like mm, you know i get i understand that story you know like i i i i've had that vacation myself okay you know what we'll just add another thousand points duplex is not it's not ai it's not so it's not it's not a it doesn't have emotional consciousness yeah, so, but there. but but what you're talking about there is the limited case you know so self-driving vehicles are gonna are gonna wreck the driving industry but there's still gonna be a niche for human operated human piloted vehicles it's just the vast majority are gonna be dumped at call centers we're gonna switch over to a bank of servers but you know one out of every 30 current call center employees is still going to have a job for those escalated situations where you do need to have yeah a human yeah but the thing is that it's going to be a system. lot of those escalated because the world we live in now is like i'm you know i'm late on my bill duplex only knows i'm going to give right, you but, two but times the current, but the current setup is designed where the main call center i would say 80 percent of the workforce at a call center is that level one I need to be escalated to someone who knows what they're talking about or send me to retention so that I can talk to an actual expert. You know, a, a core a core base is set up to do exactly the same thing. So when you get rid of that first layer and that's just fulfilled by machines, or they're trying to do it now. I mean, it's not duplex, but when I call, you know, my pharmacy and I'm just refilling a prescription, I don't talk to a person anymore. True. I go through a really gnarly menu of press one, press two, press three. But I can eventually get my prescription refilled without having to ever speak to a human and, and have the shipping and the uh, and, and the payment processed based on my file. So that's what's going to be radicalized with something like duplex is getting rid of that 80 percent of your workforce that only serves as the initial barrier to keep a caller from having to waste the time of someone who's more of an expert or more of a specialist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you do have a point. Well, no, that, well, I, yeah, you definitely do have a point, but I think you never call a call center just because you want to say something good or you want to give them... I love that. sounds like... Time. It's negative. <laughs> but that's exactly what they're I'm there calling for. you because I hate your existence. No, 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 that, that's that. exactly what a lot of call centers are there for, to address your issue. So if you're running these with algorithms and some form of AI, you know, and you need to escalate, a lot of times right now, the escalation process is kind of, you know, almost obscured by these menus that you have to go through. And they don't even give you the option for a customer service anymore. They give no. you every single option except for customer service. And you have to know that you have to say, if you're doing an automated service, a voice service, you have to say customer service several times before they escalate you. Or you have to keep hitting zero like an asshole until it says, <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying. I'm going to ask, I'm basically going to uh, 
afford to call to a service representative. Oh, you gotta so, fight that. You gotta fight them, motherfuckers. Yeah, you yeah. Fight them. <laughs> in, in a, in a world of like but to give businesses, but to give businesses some credit. I mean, you guys have all in your circles of family and friends. Like, how many problems are solved by did you turn it off and on again? Did you try unplugging it and plugging it back in again? I mean, there's a reason why when you call Spectrum or Time Warner, as much as I hate doing business with them, that the automated process walks you through rebooting your router before you ever talk to a human. You know, th there's a reason why so much of your initial tech support and so much of your initial communication with uh, a call center is at the lowest common denominator. It's because those problems are often fixed at the lowest common denominator. Mm -hmm. That is that is true. That that's a very valid indeed. Thing. Yeah, and I think on that note, we can uh, we can. Wow. It's oh, yeah. Speak, speaking of which, I just got a series of alerts from my pharmacy that my prescription's ready to pick up. There you go. There you that go. used that used to be a phone call. <laughs> it used to be a phone call from a person, and yep. now it's not. I actually, I guess in, in five years from now, Google Assistant will tell you via notification or via voice prompt that your your um, prescription is on is on route via drone. Yeah. <laughs> Super drone. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And then Oops. when it's in Hawaii, it would say, oh, there's a drone strike incoming. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> the drone strike incoming. Wow! Let's let's just let's just skip just, just, just watch just watch that Amazon. Uh, that Amazon tech is like, oh shit! I flipped the wrong button. It was supposed to say there was a delivery incoming, not a drone oh, no, strike. I did. Incoming. I did. I did want to. I did want to front. Oh, where is it? The the live tech. Uh, the live chat. Hold on. <laughs> from tech. from Aditya and Nil. Press one for English. Two for Spanish. Three for French. Four for binary. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, she, like, Aditya has all the jokes right now. <laughs> right, he's killing it, man. And then also, guys, I, I dropped a Steam key for a random shooter game in, in the live chat. I don't know if anyone picked it up, but it's yeah. in there if you go through my chat. Yeah, it's up there. The it's first there. person to copy, paste, and uh, use it, you I get it. I got to do. How it's quick, not an expensive game, but I thought it was fun. So you guys should check it out. Go I'm going to give you guys about five minutes because it's already in my Steam locker. I'm ready to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did like, anyone do the Steam sales this year? Because I've been asking everyone if they have. Summer, no. Summer sales. So you I stayed I, away. I backed off because That's surprising, doing, man. I, I backed off because I've been doing the Humble Bundle monthly. So, so I've, I've been, I've been, I've been rocking extra yes. games that I'm not going to play that way. What's what's humble bundle? I don't do a whole lot of Steam stuff, so you gotta, uh, you humble bundle you know. is. Uh, it started out as just this, like you would buy a, a pack of games, pay whatever you wanted, and then a certain portion of your payment would go to a charity that you could that you could pick. Then they've also started doing a monthly subscription box where it's guaranteed every month is at least I think something like one hundred and fifty dollars worth of games. You pay like twelve bucks. And then depending on what tier, you get a certain number of games and titles just as Steam keys in your... I mean, like last month was Destiny. So you got Destiny 2 and one of the expansions and you paid like 12 or 15 bucks for the whole box. And there were other games in there too. There was a strategy game. There was a space shooter. There was a whole bunch of other stuff too. So it, it, it's, a, it's a pretty cool service. You're not ever on the bleeding edge of a brand new game release, but this has been catching me up fast on my uh like getting back into gaming for new egg so it's been a, it's been a good fit for me okay um uh this just came in uh galaxy s10 tipped to have a side mounted fingerprint reader and super wide angle lens all right super i mean no, considering no, not wide angle super well, because again, Samsung was calling their normal field super, of view a wide super. angle shooter. So, so it's just be normal. It would be an LG wide angle lens then. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and probably not even as wide. Ouch. So the, the reporting here is going to be a trio of phones, and the cheaper one will have a fingerprint sensor on the side. Why not just on the back if it's going to be a yeah, cheaper one? A trio of Galaxy S10 phones? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's going to be 6.44, 6.2, and an affordable 5.8-inch. Really? Yeah, instead of doing that, I really wish Samsung would revisit some of their research that they were doing into larger sensor sizes. They were working on a sensor the size of the Lumia 1020. Oh, I yeah, want to see that. Because cell Samsung cell. sensors are awesome, but they haven't done anything exciting 
since the I mean, I mean since their line of cameras since the since the NX series what's, of cameras. What's that was the, the last what's the degree movie. angle for the LG uh, wide angle lens? I think it's now 105. It's narrowed considerably from the very first. The um the Samsung is rumored to have a 123. Wide so angle again. That could I'm just, be cool. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, but, you were, you were saying that Samsung may. I say it's getting rumor, by the way. Yeah, but but the the reason why we went down to a 105, which is still pretty wide, is uh, concerns over things like barrel distortion, fringing, poor optics in the corners. You you have a lot of space that you need to cover up with the lens to to make wide angle work well, and I think LG has found a a, a happy balance of warping the scene for a, me a mega fisheye field of view that still manages to be somewhat rectilinear. So if Samsung can pull it off better, awesome. But I'd be very surprised if they've got a solution uh, which actually outperforms uh, am I reading this well, field of view from last I, I uh, guess it's a, a trio lens set up uh, a 123 degree wide angle view, 16 megapixel regu regu regulation, re resolution uh, with an f-stop of 1.9 a 12 megapixel dual aperture main camera and a 13 uh, f 2.4 telephoto so tres lenses tres so, so basically what they would be doing is is trying to make the the ultimate zoom focal range lens i that that could be that could be cool i would really be curious to see how it's implemented because I, I think the zoom is the weakest part of that equation when when you zoom in i don't see where image quality is really that much better but, yeah. than just cropping from a main sensor and i'd rather have a much higher quality main sensor that then when you crop in on it you still maintain a higher degree of image fidelity that that would be a bigger get and then having a wide angle that can you know kind of give you a bolder field of view when you need it that to me would be a bigger improvement than going with three small phone sensors. Yeah, and um, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, during I think the last two weeks there was talk of Apple maybe ditching Intel for its Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and um, LTE chipsets. I don't know who they're going with, but it, it looks like they're going to ditch Intel by 2020 because that's when the contract ends, especially for 5G, <laughs> which it looks like Apple is going to be late yet again on 5G, or at least they will come in and say they brought 5G in 2020 or whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they, they it wasn't ready. They don't need it. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll jump on a new technology when everyone else has solved all of the problems for them first. Very it true. Sense. It's good business. I don't know if you're. I don't know if you if you're into business. If you're into business, I mean, oh, you, oh, you would understand this. But uh, oh, speaking of another company <laughs> who missed the mark, <laughs> I'm just gonna skip that. Uh, LG. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just reading news items for you guys now. LG's Q2 of 2018 misses estimates, but is still profitable. Mm. It sounds like LG is doing better, though. I mean, you know, the the World Cup was beneficial for LG. They threw mm. a lot of ads on that. I mean, if without the World Cup, I don't think they were thrown ads. I, I have a feeling they were done the same. I didn't really thing. see the LG ads. I was watching Telemundo. It was all sprint ads for me. Um, on on Fox, it was I, I, on Fox. Oh, Fox Pro. had a ton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and they actually had Fox anchors talking about brought to you by the new LG G7. Thank you. Yeah. They, oh. they had it there. Yeah, so they, they were Such they were a, a major sponsor name. for the English side of it. Such a horrid name. But their their profits rose sixteen point one percent same period from last year, with revenue rose three point two from uh, from last year. So well, they, they seem to be getting ahead. No, of no, 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 no. Phone, phone, is, oh. phone itself. The, the, I'll, I'll give LG. They seem to be getting ahead of the conversation on events because they were also a major sponsor for the Olympics. I, yeah. I was seeing V thirty ads on the Olympics, but now. They need to continue that discussion. They've built up a little momentum. This is where I don't have any faith in LG is that they're going to continue <laughs> talking to people after the World Cup. Once the World Cup's over, are we going to see LG vanish or are we going to still see some billboards, some print ads and some TV ads sprinkled throughout normal daily life? And that's where they keep dropping the ball is they don't reinforce the conversation they have with their consumers. They just vanish. And, and that's what kills them time and time again, is that now that the World Cup is over, you're going to be inundated by Samsung and Apple ads. So 
the obvious choice is to buy a Samsung or an Apple. Yeah, well, we'll see if they uh, they if they try to also, are they going to come out with anything in the fall to compete? To be yeah, they will. To... The, the V40 is is coming. But yeah. but Juan is right. Like you got to continue that momentum. The World Cup is a great platform that's helped you. So you might as well continue that platform. You don't have to spend as much, but you still have to spend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's and that's the part where you know. And and so so their current ad, I mean, you shift away from using your specialty ad featuring a celebrity because they have Aubrey Plaza taking a selfie with some nerd. Um, you shift away from that and you just focus on features. Just focus on features. You have differentiators. You've got the wide angle shooter. You've got the best audio on any phone currently. Make some individual commercials uh, on those features. No, no, no. You also have the loudest speaker. I mean, you could have a, you could have something where somebody's like, even with the World Cup, the guy's like, I want to waste. He's like, everybody's watching. He's like, I can't hear that. You just drop it on there and that mm-hmm. speaker, boom, done. And then Joseph Joseph Gordon Levitt shows up. <laughs> Look, guys, I can drum in a subway. We got a permit to shoot it. Oh, or, or maybe you just bring Robert Downey Jr. in, and without the Iron Man suit, but you know, just being still in <laughs> Oh, or Jason Statham changing oh, yeah. into different characters and running around all over the place while yeah. we're still watching the game. Yeah, no. just something. Just throw all of those ads together. <laughs> Great marketing team. <laughs> well, I think for one of the things they need to do, I'd like to see them change their UI some. Oh yeah. More. Oh, no, there's still plenty of of other things that they can address on the phones. But let's not pretend that fixing the phone is going to bring any new consumer awareness to their brand. This isn't a meritocracy. It's not if you truly had the best phone that consumers would magically know about it. It's that. There's a reason why Samsung and Apple dominate. It's because between those two companies, they spend about $3 billion a year on advertising. Um, um, some comments here. Um, Matt says, Sprint is advertising G7 on a regular basis in my market in Nashville. And um, Adita Anil says, a 30-second YouTube ad on PewDiePie's videos will go a long way in boosting the uh, public rep. I don't know if that's a joke or not. It is. It is. It is. It's like it's like you're kind of right, and like that's also kind of funny. PewDiePie. <laughs> There's a part of me that would say is like I don't know that I want to want a bunch of PewDiePie fans using phones I like though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, how elitist! How yeah, no. totally elitist. I, I, you know, normally I'm like all for hey, let's all be cool and groovy. Uh, and LG, I take it they'll become the official phone of Pewdie- PewDiePie if they have, <laughs> they can pull it off. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. I don't know that we need you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get crazy here, right? Let's not just get crazy. Hey, if they, if they send him KBHD a cake for his birthday, they'll definitely let they'll they'll, they'll send PewDiePie like they'll they'll put him in the phone. And, and how messed up is that? Like, like you know, MKBHD did his like first look at the G7 and has never finished any like conversation review anything. It's he's. Like LG is completely off his radar in any sort of meaningful fashion. L- LG, you know, like my birthday was like, like still now. My birthday's know? coming up too. I'm just so, saying. Yeah. You know. I, how about how about you what, like LG how about you celebrate today. us? Yeah. People yeah. who are actually <laughs> reviewing your products, not just doing a preview you, and you telling people not to buy it. You know, Juan, it's your fault. You keep digging on them all the time. We could be getting cakes, bro. Cakes. This you is know? all Juan's fault. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, bro, like we almost had that cake deal. My and bad. You busted to, to, it. to to get my LG cake. I will now say everything is perfect in LG <laughs> land, and they don't need to do anything about their business strategy. Just announced, LG is now working with cake manufacturers all over the world to deliver birthday cakes for reviewers. <laughs> yeah, Ten years from now, like LG is the premier bakery solution for for tech enthusiasts. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like tech? Do you like baked goods? Then Although, well, well, the thing is, is they'll, they'll just supply the bakeries with the ovens and everything they need. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man, they have all that. So no, instead of doing that, they'll just get the big. I remember those things have Think You, by the way. So <laughs> it's, it's part of the family have the, right there. They'll have oh, the bakers awesome. come in and bake the cakes with Think You. <laughs> <laughs> they'll have them. No, they'll use that. What is it? The, the the Chef Professional Series stuff, and they'll make everything on that and record it with a B thirty. 
<laughs> um, James W says, and Juan, and Juan promoted the hell out of the V30. Almost made me buy it until I heard of the V35. Mm-hmm. Man, you you almost. Um, so did you get the V35, James? Or are you still that almost, Mark? Let it let us know. I, yeah. I mean, I'm still on a V30. I, I didn't I didn't even get a V35. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone has in general. It's only an AT&T, too. So, yeah, uh, that's that's where it's at. But yeah, LG, LG cakes. Um, uh, there's, you know, uh, Thanksgiving oh, wait, is back v, to school. V35 is also um, Project Phi. Yeah, Project Phi. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't interrupt, don't interrupt me. LG, there's cakes for back to school. Uh, some of us have kids. Um, also, the need cake for uh, Halloween, uh, Juan's birthday, uh, uh, Warren's birthday. What else do we need a cake for? <laughs> Christmas, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Christmas cake. We love you. Yeah. Uh, nah, nah, I just sold out right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I got to take off, so I'll talk to you guys the next All one. Right, right. Yeah. All right, take, take it easy. All right, cool, guys. Uh, anything else? Any news item before we wrap up the show? I think that, I think that covers this, man. This was actually kind of a quiet week. Yeah, it was. It was a bit quiet. Uh, a few things here and there. Um, uh, oh, quick one. What's going on with Movie Pass? Because I'm hearing like they've been um, they're making some changes. Uh, Lou, I know you use Movie Pass. If you know what's going on, let me know. I know AMC released their own Movie Pass set up for amc members uh and movie pass is now um they're trying to raise funds they're also doing this escalator pricing like the more you use the more you pay type yeah, thing pricing, yeah. Yeah. which i'm like so basically you know, it goes from two dollars to six dollars at peak times <laughs> at peak i was thinking about getting it and i was like yeah it's still it's still worth it. I think it's still worth it if you if you see a lot of movies. But I looked at it and I don't I don't know if I I watched that many movies or if I pay for that many movies. Man, yeah, that's the thing. Um, yeah, it's it, you have a good thing and you mess it up. This one it sounds like fun. A Thanos subreddit is calling its it's basically doing its uh, finger snap. It's going to ban half of the members randomly. Uh, so oh, that's awesome. That is, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're going to do it. They're going to ban it. I almost want to join the subreddit, but maybe it's already happened. So, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, what's hilarious is that they they wanted to do this calling. They actually had to work with the Reddit, um, uh, what do you call them? Not moderators, but above moderators. Uh, the people. Uh, admin, administrators. Admins, thank you. Yeah. They actually had to work with the admins. It got so much noise that they went from something like 50,000 subscribers to like 200,000 subscribers. So even if they do this culling, they're still going to be way ahead of yeah. what and their I'm original sure culling is going to be, which is <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> but, they're, no, but people on that uh, on that subreddit were actually like, wait a minute. No, this defeats the whole point of what we were going <laughs> to do. Yeah, but if you think about it, you they just put out one of the greatest like counterintuitive ads out there like we're literally going to ban a bunch of people and people are like yeah yeah i want to get banned i, I, I really <laughs> really want to get banned i want to join right now so i can get banned it's it's pretty awesome i think uh actually i, I might actually be joining <laughs> <laughs> all right cool anyway guys uh i guess we've, we've come to the end of the show thank you everyone for all the comments and neil thanks for all the jokes um, and, uh, yeah, we've come to that part of the show where we talk about what's on the channel and what can, we can expect next week. So, um, Juan, what do you have on the channel? So, uh, this last week, the big get for me was wrapping up that BlackBerry Key 2 review. It is, it's a long review. There was a lot to talk about there. It's a 23 minute video, um, which a lot of people have been just saying, oh, it's clickbait. Yeah. So I, I spoke for 23 minutes with a clickbait title, apparently is the only thing you should take away from that. Okay, good stuff, um, man. Yeah, it's it's great. Um, but uh, I will be wrapping up the I I would have wrapped up the BlackBerry Key Two camera review sooner, but it was a hundred and seventeen degrees in the valley yesterday, and I didn't really feel like going out to finish I'm my. Sorry, 100 and what? 
117 degrees yesterday. It's still I'm pretty hot. Dry. Dry. I am really hoping it doesn't matter if it's dry. It's dry. <laughs> but at 117 <laughs> degrees, you're, you're it's 170 dry. degrees. It's 117 degrees of that anyway. But I'm just saying, I'm just hoping it was dry. Yeah. <laughs> because no, I mean, the humidity on that, that would just be unbearable. Oh, no, 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 no. The heat index on that would be through the roof. But um, the 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 killer was all day yesterday, we had rolling rolling brownouts. So even if I had been able to uh, to finish shooting for the review, I wouldn't have been able to edit because stuff was just getting shut off on the hour. Um, even in the middle of last night, we were we were walking around like, well, I've got a lantern, I've got flashlights, I've got backup batteries, everything's charged up, but we we got hit pretty hard. So next week, I will have the BlackBerry Key to um, review out. I'm also reviewing a product called the Raven, which is a an LTE connected uh, dash cam. Uh, for your car, which could be a lot of fun to use. Um, I just installed it yesterday. Hopefully the adhesive for the dash cam stays because it's so hot that it doesn't fall off. <laughs> um, and then I'm also wrapping up a, a little mini review on that creative uh, audio interface. So some recording kit uh, to talk about too. So pretty busy week next week. Also the podcast on Monday and new egg now on Thursday, and I've got another Fox TV spot for dorm room tech, getting back to school and, and shopping for hardware for students on Fox LA on Tuesday. So I'll be all over the place this next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cool. Cool. Uh, this week was a little bit slow. We have a lot of stuff on IGTV. Check it, check that out. We've got a, a review of the uh, Sony SP700N, which is a pair of true wireless earbuds. One person commented and said that I was lying. Uh, because the audio was trash. I am sorry, your ears are not good. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because this head. Yeah, just say, I just had to throw it out there. I'm sorry. Um, but we have a few other reviews up there. Um, and uh, we posted on here on YouTube, we posted our three months review of the P20 Pro with uh, Daniel. Um, with his trip to Europe. So you get to see what he shot with the P20 Pro in Milan, um, uh, Frankfurt and Paris um, on that trip. And also what he, you know, thinks about the device after, you know, like three months. So that's pretty much the only video we dropped last week. Uh, next week, uh, we will have a review of the TCL 6 Series TV. This is the successor to the very um, successful line, the 5 Series last year. The TV is like 649 um, And last year, that TV was, I said, was the best on the 1000 bucks if you want to buy a TV. So I want to see if this one lives up to that monk here. Um, we also will be having our 30-day review of the OnePlus 6. Um, as well as um, a few other things, which I just can't remember right now, but I'm sure I remember when I start doing the videos at some point. Um, <laughs> other than that, um, oh, one more thing. There is also, T-Cell is also doing a giveaway. Um, they're giving away 103 TVs. I'll put the link in the description here. This is to celebrate Cut the Cord Month. And the whole idea is that when you cut the cord, you save about $103. So they're giving away 103 TVs and a digital antenna. So it's the five series TVs they're giving away. Um, so, hey, look, you've won a TV, you might as well just enter. I mean, your chances of winning are higher than most other <laughs> giveaways at this point. Um, I think it either you can enter now, but I think it starts tomorrow, the 7th, which is cut the cord day. So definitely uh, check it out. I'll leave the link for you guys there. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for watching as always joining us. I appreciate all the comments in the chat. It's always fun to have you guys there. Um, and um, I appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to follow all the channels. Mr. Uh, Warren Bowman, he is bw1.com. You know, he left, but you can check him out there on YouTube. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all social media, IGTV as well. I can find him there. And Mr. Juan Bagnell is uh, some gadget guy on YouTube, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can also catch him on IGTV. I'm still waiting for his video. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, he, um, you can also uh, catch him on New York, uh, New York Live, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. And uh, his Fox uh, debut will be Friday, right? Oh no! I do uh, the Fox Tech Tuesday, uh, Tech Tuesdays. So Tech this, Tuesdays. This Tuesday, probably eight forty-five in the morning Pacific time. Oh, but you'll you also be able to watch it on FoxLA.com. 
Yeah, exactly. That's why I watch it because you know that's yeah. kind of early for me too. Yeah, to, can't do that. <laughs> uh, and of course, our, our, so you can follow Sam. It is uh, Black Iron underscore Man on Twitter, uh, and. Um, me, it's Border Work, uh, all social channels. Thank you very much, and uh, enjoy the weekend. Looks like the weather is much better today, and uh, hopefully, you know, have a good weekend and uh, stay safe. Bam.